why is ending violence and harassment against transport workers such an important topic? And why does the ILO Violence and Harassment Convention contribute to making the, the sector fit for women to work in? To start with, we know that violence and harassment is an everyday reality for many women transport workers, and even more so since the COVID-19 pandemic. Violence and harassment against women transport workers by third parties, customers, passengers, the public, has indeed become a very serious issue. Violence and harassment against women is a form of gender-based violence. Um, it includes sexual harassment, sexual assault, stalking, and indeed domestic violence when it impacts on the workplace. It exists because of discrimination, power and control of women, and it results in women holding unequal power in the workplace and in society. Even before the COVID-19 COVID pandemic, half of the women responding to the ETF's 2017 survey said that they had experienced violence and harassment by passengers and customers and that this was considered a regular part of the job. The ETF's most recent survey carried out in 2019 um, found that a significant barrier for women's progression at work was a masculinist culture. And in fact, about half of women responding to that survey said that their workplace, their workplace didn't prioritize a safe and adequate environment for women. This threatens the possibility for women to work in safety, to progress in their careers. It threatens their safety. Clearly making transport fit for women to work in means, ex it, it, it means eliminating sexist violence, abuse, harassment, and ensuring a work environment based on safety, dignity, and respect. It's important to note that ETF also recognises the diversity of women working in the transport sector and the specific risks that arise for women facing multiple and intersecting forms of discrimination at work. The 2017 survey carried out by, by ETF on violence against women found that migrant, black and minority ethnic women frequently faced higher risks of violence and harassment, often highly sexualized. That's why the ILO's Convention on Violence and Harassment and the accompanying recommendation, Recommendation 206, is so important to women transport workers. The Convention says that everybody has the right, regardless of the sector that they work in or the job that they do, they have the right to work in freedom from violence and harassment. Transport unions across the world were part of a massive campaign for the, for, 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 the for, for Convention 190. It's really having an impact today, the campaign for ratification of the campaign, of, 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 of Convention 190. Um, and many governments across Europe are committed to ratifying it. We need to ensure that the Convention is implemented and the unions have a key role in the transport sector to making sure that the, the blueprint that is offered by the Convention is effectively integrated into collective bargaining, into workplace negotiations, into workplace policies, into risk assessments and occupational safety and health. Most important is that there's a strong focus on gender-based violence in the convention. And this means, that we, this means that we have to ensure that we have gender responsive workplace policies, gender responsive risk assessments, that deal with all forms of violence and harassment in the workplace. So this is really important in taking, taking into account gender responsive systems, ensuring that it includes third party violence and harassment, and importantly, that it recognizes that governments and employers have a responsibility to address the impact of domestic violence um, in the workplace itself. So making the sector fit for women to work in mean that, means that women in unions are involved in designing workplace policies, occupational safety and health and risk assessments, and that they have trust and confidence in the procedures that are put in place. This is the challenge ahead for unions, particularly so that they can be part of the important process of the recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic and to ensure the full implementation of the very positive aspects of Convention 190.